When you're putting any type of policies in place, it could probably be for one of two reasons. Number one, you want to be able to secure something. So maybe you have a compliance need. Maybe you just want to be able to secure different pieces of your infrastructure, whether it's on-prem, in the cloud, whatever it is. Maybe from a security perspective, maybe because you have to check a box. The other piece of it is the second part, best practices. So like maybe you want to implement some best practices within your environment. And to do that, you want to set up specific policies to do so. For example, one good thing that I always think about from an you know example perspective is I don't want a team to use the latest container image when deploying. I want you to use, you know, a version 1.1 or 1.0 or 10.20 or whatever it is. You have to specify a version number, not the latest. Why? Because usually the latest container image is a dev environment or, you know, alpha or something like that. Now that is something that could also be used from a security perspective, but that's more, you know, a best practice. So there are a lot of different, you know, policy as code things. Uh, there's open policy agent, OPA, there's Kyverno. And one that I've been looking at recently is cloud custodian. So cloud custodian works across Azure, AWS, GCP, and you're essentially able to create policies in YAML for what you want to implement within your environment. Again, it could be from a security perspective or it could be just from a best practice perspective or a little bit of both. So let's go ahead and open up VS Code and see how it looks. All right, let's go ahead and get started on a really basic policy. So the name here is find all resource groups. You have to put the hyphens here instead of spaces or dots or something like that. And then the resource. So this is calling upon from an API perspective when you call out to Azure and you're specifying objects. So in this case, you're calling out to Azure dot resource group. Okay. And you can drill down based on that object using something like, you know, if you're thinking about dot notation, but the point is, is that these are API calls being made, which means you can search around the internet and say, okay, I want to be able to call in Azure virtual machines name and resource group. How do I do that? And you're going to see something like this, you know, a dot notation format. So let's go ahead and run this. And before we actually run the code, we will go ahead and we will validate this configuration. So, oh. ah, sorry, I'm not in the right uh, directory. Let's actually get into the right place here. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and try that again. All right. And as we can see, the configuration is valid. So now what we can do is we can run the configuration. Use custodian run, find all RG, and then the output directory. So the output, there's a lot of really interesting information that we can see in there in terms of what resources were actually called. Because sometimes this could happen. You may specify a policy and then you go and you look at the output and you're like, oh wait, that didn't call the thing that I was hoping that it would call. Let me drill down and figure out what Cloud Custodian thought I meant by this, and then let me refactor. So the output directory, it just, you know, puts it in the current directory, which is where this dot notation is, or you can just, you know, specify a directory. All right, notice here, authenticated, policy, find all resource groups, count three. So let's go ahead, head over to Azure here. Let me zoom on in. And then I will go to resource groups. Okay. Now notice I have two subscriptions in here. That's why you're seeing five, but in Azure subscription one, which is the one that I'm currently logged into on the terminal, you see one, two, three. So it did in fact pull the right amount. Okay. And then if I open this up here, Notice we have this directory, find all resource groups. It's pulling from the same name that we specified in the policy. And then you can see the actual log, okay? You can also see the resources that were called, the subscription, and then you can see right here, one, two, three. There's the third one, okay? And that's all of the output right here. So you can see exactly what was called. All right, let's make things a little bit more interesting here. So I'm going to add in a bigger policy. All right. So I got a couple of things going on here. Number one, I want to find all resource groups. Number two, I'm going to find virtual machines. 
azure.vm. This is just the description here. And then number three, I'm going to tag the virtual machine. Okay. So notice all policies are kind of set up in this fashion. And I went from, you know, small to large. So if we take a look here, you're always specifying your resource, the description, the name, and then what you want to do. You can also specify a filter. So like maybe you want to filter on all VMs that are running. Okay. So you can specify a filter there as well, but you're always going to see name, resource, description, action. And then again, maybe filter. Okay. And these are very, very basic policies, by the way, I highly recommend going and looking at the documentation because I'm working on some policies right now. And what I can tell you is they can get pretty large. All right. So to run this policy, first things first, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save. I'm going to clear out all this stuff here because it's going to recreate, right? You can notice I've already run this configuration, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to clear that out. Find all RG, probably not the right naming convention. I should, I should change this to like find RG and tag VMs or something like that. But again, this is just for testing. So I'm going to head back over to Azure and I'm going to go to virtual machines. I'm going to create a new virtual machine because I don't have anything running here. And I'll just run through this really quick. I'm just going to create a standard virtual machine. All right. If we go to the resource here, we can now see VM test one. All right. Beautiful. So let me go ahead and go back here. And you know what, before we do this, I am going to see if this is going to work here. Um, write me a cloud custodian filter that filters running, that filters virtual machines that are running. This is actually the first time that I'm uh, kind of playing around with a uh, co-pilot in here. Let's, uh, let's see what it does. Uh, properties, provisioning state. Mm. Type properties, provisioning state succeeded. No. Um, let's do that. Oh, discard. All right, let me try that again. Write a cloud custodian Azure filter that filters only virtual machines. I'm just going to do this that are in a running state. Huh? Okay. I'm going to accept that at the same time. Calm. I got to move this over. That was my fault. All right. I'm going to look at the docs really quick. See if this is valid. All right. Yeah. I just did a quick Google search. This is what like I would be expecting. Okay. So let's yeah. Uh, AI failed me. That's okay. All right. Let me, uh, let me see filters type value, move this over. And then the key should be status and the value should be running. Okay. That makes more sense. All right. So what I'm going to do here is resource Azure VM. I'm going to tag the VMs filter based on value that is running. So a virtual machine that's running and then filter it. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and validate that again. All right. Looking good. Now let's go ahead and run this thing. All right. And we're going to see three outputs here. Okay. So notice virtual machine resource VM count one. Okay. So if I come over here, virtual machines, we can see here tag virtual machine. So it says count zero, which is interesting. So maybe in fact, that was not the right policy. Let's go ahead and we'll, uh, yeah, see how it says status 
running. But it did not tag. Oh, maybe. Let's uh, let's see here. Capital R. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna clean this up here. All right. Let's go ahead and try to run that again. We'll validate, and then we will run this. Nope, still count zero. Very interesting. So the first one worked. It did find all the virtual machines, but then, yeah, it didn't tag it. Interesting. All right, so I'm seeing a value here. I am curious if let's go ahead and let's go ahead and try this. Nope, still count one. All right, let's go ahead and figure out this filter here. All right, and I think I got us closer here. Type instance view statuses dot code. So pull the codes in swap power state running. I'm not, so this is uh, like, it could be equal like EQ or something like that. So it's essentially saying in the status code, find a value that's power state running. Value type, I don't know what this is. You know what, I'm gonna comment that out because I'm not 100% sure that I need that. Let's go ahead and test that out. But if you're wondering where I found it, I just looked on the docs and I saw this here. The action is to stop, but I don't need the action, I just need the filter. So let me go ahead and run this. Yeah, count zero, see, okay. So I don't know what this value type means, but it seems like I need it. So let me go ahead and run that again, All right? And that in fact did work now. So we can see policy tag virtual machine. We can see that it now did find the one that was running VM test one. And then if we go to the Azure portal and I do a refresh here, all right, we could see tags, environment, dev test. So I'm not, I, I gotta Google around a little bit to figure out what this uh, status code here means, but, or I'm sorry, what this value type swap here means. But nonetheless, this configuration did in fact work, which we can see right here. So hopefully you enjoyed stepping through the process of running Cloud Custodian with me and uh, hopefully it helps you.